Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Benenin and for today's video we're going to be ranking all of the Asian sunscreens I've tried in the past year. So from last summer all the way up until now, so 2021 to 2022. Um, these sunscreens will include Japanese and Korean sunscreens. I believe there are a couple mineral sunscreens, but a majority of them are chemical sunscreens. I love these like ranking videos. I know they're not as popular right now, but I feel like they're the easiest way to kind of like see people's opinion in, in like a short format. So keep in mind that the way I'm discussing these products, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail because I already have full reviews on each of the products and they will all be linked in the description and up in the cards as well. And then also keep in mind that uh, this is my opinion based off of my skin type and my skin concerns so I have oily acne prone sensitive skin so what I rank as like really high up may not be the same for you so just keep that in mind this is just my opinion and my thoughts and then my last little note <laughs> before we jump in if you hear some background noise it is super windy outside for some reason so if you hear some like whoosh, whoosh, it's the wind, it's fine, we're just gonna ignore it. The categories that I'm using is love to see it, so this is top of the list, holy grail products, things that I really like for my skin or things that I recommend often to other people. The next category is mid, just kind of like mediocre. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it. The last category is dumpster fire, these are products that I hate. <laughs> Hate is a strong word. Products that I really, really don't like. Products that I would not recommend to people. Products that I didn't even like go back to try to reuse it after filming the initial video because I was like, I don't want to touch this anymore. Um, those are gonna go in the dumpster fire. So we're gonna get started. There's no specific order, rhyme, or reason to this. So the first sunscreen we're gonna talk about is the 365 Derma Relief sunscreen. It is SPF 50 plus PA of 4 plus. This one is a Korean sunscreen. I believe I picked it up at Salvana at the time it was retailing for like $18, $19. I'll make sure to insert the ingredients up here, but I believe this one had titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, maybe something else. I'm gonna put this one in dumpster fire. It is our first dumpster fire product. And the reason I'm ranking it that low is because for me, this one had a very slight cast to it. You Like it wasn't super bad, I could probably get away with wearing it and going out about my day but if you have a skin complexion that's slightly deeper than mine you'll probably see the white cast also be i think because this is sort of a mineral sunscreen reapplication looked a lot worse than it did with the first application so not one that i'd be able to reapply and i like to stay somewhat diligent about reapplication so i need a product that i can at least reapply once throughout the day also it did have a fragrance to it and i have a sensitive nose and the fragrance was a little bit annoying for me for my sensitive skin i felt like it left me a little bit itchy i don't know I don't know what was going on. It wasn't like my face was burning, but I had like a itchy feeling, so I can't really recommend it for people with sensitive skin. So for that reason, it's gonna go in dumpster fire. The next one that we're gonna be talking about is the Heige Vegan Sun Cream. This is an SPF 50 plus, PA of four plus. This one is 50 milliliters. I got it on Yes Style for $27. This one has some of those fancy filters like Uvenol A Plus, Teen Sorb S, um, I'll insert all of them up here on the screen. This one has alcohol in it, and the alcohol didn't like bother my skin, but you can you can smell that it smells like alcohol when you um, pour it out initially. Um, I think I'm gonna put this one in the love to see it. I found this sunscreen to be very moisturizing and I really loved it in the winter. I haven't been reaching for it as much in the summertime because I'm so oily in the summer and I prefer more matte finish, but I really feel like I will go back to this one in the winter time. So I'm gonna put it in the love to see it. I've also recommended this sunscreen to a lot of people because I find that the finish is moisturizing. It has like a nice, normal finish, slightly glowy, um, and a lot of people tend to like that type of finish. I feel like if you have oily skin, you can wear it by itself and it's fine, but if you have dry skin and you need a little bit more oomph underneath, it wears well with other products, um, like a heavier moisturizer under it. Also, I didn't have any breakouts with this one or sensitivity, so that's like an added bonus for me. Okay, the next two are from Innisfree. The first one is the Innisfree Daily UV Defense Sunscreen. 
This one is a chemical sunscreen with avobenzone, homosalate, and octosalate. I got this one at Sephora. I think it's 50 milliliters and it was for $15 at the time. I'm gonna put this one in the, uh, I'm gonna put it in the dumpster fire and hear me out, <laughs> hear me out because some of you might be surprised by that. Finish of it is like a normal to dewy finish. I just found that it was a little bit greasy and that could just be because I was testing it out in the summer months. I have yet to try that in the winter. I might have a different opinion if I test it out in the drier winter. But for the summer, it was a little bit greasy. I found that it never fully sank in and I just don't like feeling like I can feel stuff on my hands and my face, especially when it's hot and humid. The first application was okay. The second application, it got even greasier. There is no um, white cast, but the main reason I'm putting it down below besides like the finish is because for me it caused some breakouts and it was breakouts every time I used it. Like I tried it the first time I started getting all these small little bumps and then I would stop using it, it would go away and then I'd try it again and it'd come back. And acne is like a really big concern for me and it's taken me many, many years to somewhat tame down my acne and have my skin looking like this. So if a product breaks me out, I feel like it's an immediate no for me. The next one from Innisfree is their matte priming sunscreen. This one is also gonna go in dumpster fire. This one left a very heavy white cast and the cast is like not one that I feel like anybody can use. I got this one also from Sephora. It's also 50 milliliters. It was $18 at the time. This one is a mineral sunscreen, so that explains somewhat of the cast. It has octosalate, titanium dioxide, and octocrylene. It wasn't even white, it was just purple. And I don't know anybody that looks purple, at least in my life. So like, even if you have very light, like porcelain looking skin, I feel like you're still gonna see the purple hue and it's gonna go straight into dumpster fire. Next one is the Round Lab Birch Juice Moisturizing Sunscreen. This one is an SPF 50 plus PA of four plus. It's 50 milliliters and I got it for $18. I don't know where to put this one. I wanna put it in love to see it but I also wanna put it in mid. The finish of it is a nice normal finish. I didn't feel like it was drying. I didn't feel like it was heavy. I was able to wear it on its own. It also didn't cause me any breakouts. I didn't have any sensitivities to it, no irritation to it. It's fragrance free. Also, it didn't sting my eyes, so that's like a really big plus. The thing is though, I feel feel like for some reason I haven't been reaching for this as much like it's just not in my rotation never mind I remember why I want to put it in mid for my skin I didn't have any cast with it and I didn't I didn't see anything but I did have a friend try it and she had a slight cast so I don't know if it's like the products you put underneath that kind of determines if there is a very slight cast. That's why I'm gonna put it in mid because I think the cast, it really depends on how you're wearing it and who's wearing it. Also, it does stick in your hair. But for guys with facial hair, you might have some issues with it. Overall, like I liked it in general, but I'm hesitant. That's why I was hesitant to recommend it to everybody because I don't think everybody will like this one. So I'm gonna put it in mid. So the next two are from Suncut. I've reviewed their gold bottle and the blue bottle. So the gold one is the Suncut UV Perfect Gel Super Waterproof. It's an SPF 50 plus. This one has octanoxate, polysilicone 15, and some other stuff. I'll put it up on the screen. This one is an SPF 50 plus, PA of four plus. I got it from YesStyle for 11.52. The price really fluctuates on this one. The size is about 100 grams that you're getting. I'm putting it in holy grail, love to see it. But for your skin, you might have some issues. So for my skin, I had it where it went on very smoothly with a moisturizer and on its own. It wears great underneath makeup, like excellent. It works as a really nice base. I've only tested this one out in the summer and I've only worn it in the summer. So for the summer, it works fine for me on its own. I think if I were to wear it in the winter, I'm definitely gonna have to wear that moisturizer underneath because it's just not super moisturizing on its own. I don't have any stinging with my eyes. I don't feel like it moves around. There is really no fragrance to it in my opinion. But the reason why for you, you might be like, no, actually I'm, I would put that in mid is because there is some slight pilling to it. Um, for me, I only experience the pilling like when it's on places where things rub up against each other. So like if I put it right here, 
um, and I'm like bending my neck and stuff, I will get some residue there and some pilling. Also, if I put it on my neck and my clothes are rubbing on it, I will get some pilling. But on my face, I never, I've never had any pilling with it at all. So maybe that's why some people don't like it as much, but for my skin, I'm putting it and love to see it. This is the sunscreen I've been wearing the most this summer since I've um, recorded that video. Every time <laughs> I'm not testing a sunscreen, this is the one that I've gone back to. It's not perfect, you know, for everybody, but it's perfect for me. So the other one from Suncut that I tested is a little bit more moisturizing. It's the Suncut Aquily UV Protect Gel. It's an SPF 50 plus, PA of 4 plus. Um, it's got that Tinasorb S in there and titanium dioxide. This one does have alcohol, so it smells like alcohol, um, but the fragrance does go away the longer you wear it, but that does, that is kind of an issue for some people. So the difference between the gold one and the blue one is that this blue one, the texture is also a lightweight gel, but I find that this one is a little bit more moisturizing than the other one. Um, this one also gives you that normal finish, whereas the other one sometimes look a, looks a little bit matte. Um, so I think I'm gonna put this one in mid. Um, I did like the finish. I like the way that it wore on its own and with a moisturizer. My only con with it is that it doesn't wear that great with makeup. It starts to kind of pill and separate the longer you wear it with makeup. Okay, next on the list is the Innistree Sun... Innistree? Is that what it is? Yes, Innistree. I always mix up Innistree and Innis free. <laughs> but this is the Industry Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. It's an SPF 50 plus, PA of 4 plus. I think this one had Tinasorb S and M in it. The Tinasorb M, this is kind of like that hybrid filter. So sometimes people experience a white cast with this and sometimes people don't have an issue with it. The thing that I liked about this sunscreen is it does have niacinamide and some other really nice skin benefiting ingredients in it. I got this one on YesStyle again. I think it was like $18, $18.50, I believe, at the time. So overall, this one was a decent sunscreen. It applies nicely, as in you put it on, it dries pretty quickly. I didn't have any pilling or anything. I didn't see any white cast really in any type of lighting. And also I was able to reapply it and it worked fine. The finish is more of a glowy, like a, it's like a good glowy. It's not like an oily, greasy glowy, but you are getting a bit of a glow to it. I think for my skin, I'm gonna put this under the mid category because it looked fine on its own. It wore fine with makeup. I haven't reached for it as much, so I can't really put it in the love to see it category, holy grail product. So we're just gonna put it at mid. It was a decent sunscreen, just not one of my favorites. Okay, the next one is the Cause RX Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. This one was a pilly hot mess. I I don't know why so many people like this sunscreen. This Cause RX Aloe Soothing Sun Cream, I got it for like $11, $11-$12 on Yes Style. It is 50 milliliters, it's an SPF 50 plus. I wanna say the PA is three plus. I really didn't like the smell of this. It was kind of florally. It's a very strong scent. I think I'm gonna put this one on dumpster fire. I don't see myself ever, ever going back to using this and I never recommend it really to anybody now. Um, the pilling was just excessive. You could reduce the pilling by like patting instead of rubbing. But the thing is when you wear makeup, a lot of times if you're using a brush, you are kind of like swiping to spread things out. So it would break out, it would like pill up with makeup and I had to be like really careful about how I apply it. Um, also, I felt like it gave me a slight cast and the cast was really dependent on the lighting. It's hard to say what the cast would look like on other people's skin. A lot of people like this one. For me, it's just trash, just garbage. So we're just gonna leave it at that. Another trash product, I feel like I'm being too harsh, but another trash product in my opinion is the new Perito sunscreen. So they relaunched their original sunscreen and they definitely changed the formula of it from what I've heard. I'd never tried the original one before they pulled it. I've only tried the newer one. Um, and for me, it was very greasy and very oily, which would be great if you have very dry skin, like very dry skin. So this is their Prito Daily Go-To Sunscreen. It's broad spectrum, SPF 50 plus, PA of four plus. It's 60 milliliters. When I got it, it was 1930. The thing that I did like about it is that it's fragrance free and I didn't have any irritation on my eyes, so that's great. When you first apply it, it's like a bearable type of glow and shine, but then when you wear it 
with at least what I wore it for two hours and I came back, it just felt very greasy and it felt very heavy. I definitely would not recommend reapplying with this one because it just gets even greasier and heavier. The next one is the Nivea Sun Water Gel. It's only an SPF 35 and it's a PA of three plus. So I like the way that this, the finish of this one is. I like how it reapplies. It's very lightweight gel. It rubs in very quickly, dries down very quickly. The more layers you add on it, it doesn't feel like it's getting super heavy. It wears well underneath makeup and it also wears really nicely on top of makeup as a way to reapply when you're wearing makeup. But I think with the lower SPF, um, and PA rating. I haven't been finding myself wearing it as much in the summer when it's very hot outside and I'm outside for longer. So for that reason, I'm gonna put it in mid. There's nothing wrong with the actual formula or finish of it. I did like it, but I really only reach for this one if I'm like indoors and I, the only sunlight I'm getting is like window lighting. So like SPF 35 is fine. This is the Laneige Hydro UV Defense Sunscreen. It's broad spectrum SPF 50 plus. Retailing for $30, so a little bit up there. It has avobenzone, homosalate, octocrylene, octosalate in it. It also has a fragrance though. It's like that lavendery florally scent and I didn't really like the fragrance to it. The finish of this one is like a normal to glow. Again, Again, um, which I actually expected it to look very greasy, you know, after wearing it for a while, but it looked fine with the first application, and then two hours later, it surprisingly looked the same. Like I didn't get any greasier, which is crazy to me. Pretty much only able to wear it solo on bare skin. I found that if I put other products on it, it got a little bit too heavy and it started to get greasy, but on its own, it works fine. Reapplication is fine. It feels a little bit heavier, but it's not like anything crazy. It was just kind of like, okay. Um, I feel like I would like the finish of this more in the winter. I've only tested it out in the summer, so that probably changes the way that I feel about it, but in the winter when I'm more dry, I can see myself liking the finish better. I'm tempted to put this one in dumpster fire too because I did have breakouts from this and my acne did not react well to it. Yeah, and also with the fragrance, I didn't really like that either. I also found that I my skin was a little bit irritated after wearing it. Yeah. And it's very expensive too. It's $30, which I feel like that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, okay, it's gonna go in dumpster fire. That's it. All right, so that's the last one. Those are all of the Asian sunscreens that I've tried. If there's anything in here that you disagreed with or you're like, yeah, I agree with where you put that, that's very accurate, let me know down in the comments section below. If there are any other Asian sunscreens that you love and you'd like to see me review, also leave that down in the comment section below. All right, so that's it for today's video. Come back next week. We're gonna be doing a review on the new Trader Joe sunscreen, which is supposed to be a dupe for the Supergroup Unseen. And then the following week, we will be doing another sunscreen ranking video of all of the other sunscreens that I've tried that are not Asian. I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye.